The Cudalor sandstone formation is a fascinating geological feature from the Miocene-Pliocene epochs, primarily composed of sandstones, clay, and gravel. Here are some interesting facts about it. The formation dates back to the Miocene-Pliocene epochs, around 23 million to 2.58 million years ago. It consists of gritty to pebbly and ferruginous sandstones. The sediments were deposited in a delta distributary channel under shallow marine influence, indicating a tropical to subtropical humid climate. The formation contains marine fossils, including foraminifera, ostracoda, bryozoans, brachiopods, gastropods, and acanthocephala. The formation includes lignite deposits, particularly in the Nabeli area between Berdhachalam and Cudalor. The Cudalore sandstone formation provides valuable insights into the geological history and paleoclimatic conditions of the region. Here are some quotes from authors about the Cudalore sandstone formation. B. D. Mandaukar and Debbie Mukherjee 2014. The Palino assemblage suggests an early Miocene age. The palinoflora of Panruti subdivides the sediments into three cenozones, indicating a tropical to subtropical humid climate with high rainfall and deposition in a delta distributary channel under shallow marine influence. Bredenberg 1908. The name Cudalore sandstone was first proposed by Bredenberg, 1908. It comprises gritty to pebbly and ferruginous sandstones and is considered continental in origin. Eames 1950. Considering the position of the Cudalore sandstones over the Karaikal beds, believed them to be of Ponchan, mid-Miocene age. This age was suggested mainly on the basis of the occurrence of Mesembryozylon schmidianum, a fossil wood occurring in Trivikary grits. Shankar K. Aravindan S. and Rajendran. S. 2014. The Hydrogeomorphological Mapping of the Paravanar River Sub-Basin, Cudalore District, Tamil Nadu, reveals that the major rock types of the study area are argillaceous sandstones, pebble-bearing sandstones, grits, sand, and clays with pebbles. These quotes provide a deeper insight into the geological and environmental significance of the Cudalore sandstone formation. Remember check out the authenticity of the data. These area of knowledge is updated day by day. Fossilized tree trunks occur in the sandstone mounds about a kilometer east of Thiruvakarai village, Banortalik, Bilapuram district, Tamil Nadu. Geologists call this Neo-Pliocene sedimentary rocks as, Cudalore sandstone formation. About 20 million years ago these tree trunks have been brought from forests by rivers and deposited the water bodies along with the sediments. On burial, due to petrification processes, the organic matter was replaced by silica, retaining the original structures such as annular rings and tree trunk nodes. Absence of roots, barks and branches indicate that these tree trunks were transported to the present location and were fossilized. More than 200 fossilized tree trunks are spread over an area of about 217 acres in nine enclosures. Some are more than 30 meters in length and 1.5 meters in diameter. European naturalist M. Sonneret in 1781 first documented the existence of fossilized woods from Thiruvakarai. These fossil trees belong to both gymnosperms and angiosperms. It is likely that modern plant families like Guttiferae, Leguminosae and Euphorbiaceae might have also flourished here. Some of the trunks resemble the modern tamarindus species. Fossil wood trees are very rare and occur only in some parts of the world silently. These fossil woods tell us the Earth's history by protecting them we are saving the imprints of Earth's history. 
Geological Survey of India, the custodian of National Geological Monuments, is protecting these rare occurrences of fossil woods since 1957. Neo-Pliocene sedimentary rocks belong to the Miocene and Pliocene epochs, dating back around 23 million to 2.58 million years ago. These rocks are part of a crucial period in Earth's history where significant geological and climatic changes occurred, including the development of grasslands and many modern plant and animal families. The Cudalor Sandstone Formation, mentioned as a classic example of such sedimentary rocks. The Cenozoic Era is the most recent of the three major subdivisions of animal history, spanning from about 66 million years ago to the present. It's often called the Age of Mammals, because mammals became the dominant land animals during this time. The Cenozoic is divided into three periods, the Paleogene, Neogene, and Quaternary. The Paleogene period, 66 to 23 million years ago, is the first period of the Cenozoic era. It is subdivided into three epochs. Paleocene, 66 to 56 million years ago. Following the mass extinction that wiped out the dinosaurs, this epoch saw the rise of mammals and birds. Eocene, 56 to 34 million years ago. Characterized by warm climates and the early development of many modern mammal families. Oligocene, 34 to 23 million years ago. Marked by a global cooling trend and the spread of grasslands. The Neogene period, 23 to 2.6 million years ago, follows the Paleogene and includes two epochs. Miocene, 23 to 5.3 million years ago. This epoch saw significant geological and climatic changes, including the formation of the Himalayas and the cooling of global climates. It was a time of diversification for many plant and animal species, including the ancestors of humans. Pliocene, 5.3 to 2.6 million years ago. During this epoch, the climate continued to cool leading to the spread of grasslands and the evolution of many modern species. The Quaternary Period, 2.6 million years ago to present, is the most recent period of the Cenozoic Era. It includes the Pleistocene and Holocene epochs, characterized by repeated glacial cycles and the rise of human civilizations. These periods and epochs represent significant stages in Earth's geological and biological history, each marked by distinct climatic changes and evolutionary developments. The petrification process of the fossilized trees in Thiruvakarai is quite remarkable. Here's a brief overview of the process and its timescale. Transport and deposition. Around 20 million years ago, Massive flooding events transported tree trunks from nearby forests to the area where they were deposited along with sediments. Burial. Over time, these tree trunks were buried under layers of sediments, which protected them from decay and external elements. Petrification. As the tree trunks were buried, the organic matter within them began to decompose, and minerals, primarily silica, started to seep in. This process, known as petrification, gradually replaced the organic material with minerals, preserving the original structure of the wood, including annular rings and nodes. Preservation. The petrification process took millions of years, resulting in the beautifully preserved, fossilized trees we see today. The entire process, from the initial flooding to the complete petrification, spans millions of years, showcasing the incredible geological history of the region. These fossilized tree trunks found in Thiruvakarai were maybe, it is speculated, transported from other locations by ancient rivers. The absence of roots, barks, and branches supports this theory, indicating that the trees were uprooted 
carried away by strong currents, and eventually buried in their current location. This natural transportation and subsequent petrification process have left us with these incredible, ancient snapshots of Earth's history. The petrified fossils of Thiruvakurai were dated in many ways and compared with fossils of different parts of the world since 1940s along with the rare sand stream canyon spread a considerable area around. A big part of the canyon is restricted area, it is said. The National Fossil Wood Park, the Tuvakurai, established by the Geological Survey of India in 1940, showcases around 200 wood fossils. These fossils, dating back approximately 20 million years to the Miocene epoch, offer a tactile connection to an ancient world, with each petrified log telling a story of a forest long gone. These ancient timbers, now stone, provide a glimpse into the climatic and ecological conditions of the Miocene marked by warmer global temperatures and the spread of grasslands. Comparing Thiruvakurai with other petrified forests around the world, such as the Petrified Forest National Park in Arizona and Puyango Petrified Forest in Chile, provides a fascinating global perspective. Thiruvakurai's fossils date back around 20 million years to the Miocene epoch, while Arizona's fossils are over 200 million years old from the Triassic period, and Puyango's fossils are about 100 million years old from the Cretaceous period. Each site showcases different geological eras and ancient ecosystems. Thiruvakurai spans 247 acres with around 200 fossils, while Petrified Forest National Park covers 230 square miles with thousands of fossilized trees. Puyango, with over 2,658 acres, is known for its massive petrified logs. Each site's fossils provide insights into their respective periods. Miocene flora in Thiruvakurai, Triassic ecosystems in Arizona, and Cretaceous biodiversity in Puyango.